In the early hours of the 9th of January 2009, an anti-tank missile was fired at the Salha family home in Beit Lahir, northern Gaza. Its hollow charge penetrated the roof and entered one of the rooms, impacting on the floor and leaving a small hole there. Three minutes later, a bomb struck and destroyed the house. Six people were killed, all women and children. This strike exemplifies a new strategy adopted by the Israeli Air Force, referred to as knock-on roof. This is one of several methods used to alert residents of an impending attack. Warnings take the form of leaflets, telephone calls or SMSs informing the inhabitants of the impending destruction of their homes. They also take the form of warning shots or the firing of a non-explosive missile. When receiving such warnings, the inhabitants of a house need to make a choice. They can either leave the house and risk their lives in the streets or remain in the house. If they remain in the house, their status changes in the eyes of Israeli military lawyers. According to their interpretation of the law, if a warning has been issued and not heeded, the victim is no longer considered to be a non-combatant, but rather a voluntary human shield. Their killing is thus considered to be justified collateral damage. The destroyed home of the Salha family was documented by weapons expert Chris Cobb-Smith, who visited the site after the attack. His series of photographs was used to construct a 3D computer model of the house. In addition to this, on the 28th of August 2013, forensic architecture interviewed two of the surviving members of the Salha family in Gaza by satellite link from the Al Jazeera English studios in London. Fayez Salha and Noor Salha, his son, have been attempting to bring their story to public attention and obtain redress for their loss. With the family's help, we further detailed the 3D model of their home to use it as an aid in Noor and Fayez's retelling of the night of the strike. The family were all sleeping despite the fact that Gaza was under attack. At 3 a.m., a warning missile was shot at the building. Rather than only shaking the building, it penetrated through the roof and entered one of the rooms. Noor realized that the noise had not come from the outside when he saw smoke coming from the library. So they were familiar with this being used as a tactic? What wasn't clear to them was what they should do next. After several moments of confusion and consultation, Randa Salha, Noor's mother, called Fayez Salha and asked him what to do. I called him on the phone and told him that the house was attacked by a attack. So I told him that he was going to get out of the house in the direction of the house. It was not clear to the family that from the moment of impact their status had changed and that they needed to take some crucial decisions. The family did not know that the warning strike left them merely three minutes before their house was to be bombed and destroyed. The family gathered by the stairs ready to leave, but according to Noor, his mother wanted the family to split into two groups. The reason for the family splitting into two groups was their fear that larger groups moving at night might be seen as suspicious by the Israelis and targeted. Noor left the house with four of his relatives, but his mother stayed behind. 
بعد سقوط سقوط الصاروخ انا والاشخاص اللي كانوا معي تقريبا من هاي الناحية لا عند ممر خروج او نزول على سلم البيت بعد هيك انا اتجهت باتجاه الغرب وبعدها اتجهت انا باتجاه الشمال طبعا موقع البيت بهذا المكان اما بالنسبة لي انا لبعد عن المنزل فتقريبا انا في هذا المكان While the first group was 50 meters away from the building, the second group was getting organized to leave the house. They had just reached the bottom of the stairs when the bomb struck the building. الأم أم وطفلان كانوا خارج البيت الأم كان اسمها راندا والطفلان الطفلان بهاء الدين ورولا. The three minutes between the warning and the bomb had not been enough to safely evacuate all the occupants of the house. Two women and four children were killed. The Salha family petitioned the Israeli courts for justice, but their case was dismissed. We met their lawyer, Mohamed Jabarin, on the 5th of January 2014. This, they said, was like a military base. He rent his basement for uh, Gaza. And he said it was for cooking, uh, they are cooking rice. And, and we saw in the bombing, you will see the rice. And then I bring this to the court. Uh, yeah. And the judge said, uh, maybe it's a mistake for the airplanes that attack, but uh, we cannot recognize it. Despite the strike being a mistake, the court has ruled that the state is not liable for consequences resulting from an act of war. No one was charged with the killing of the six members of the Salha family.